Lights, camera, action. This is Universal Studios. We're going on tour to visit Hollywood's largest movie studio, home of Universal Pictures. Cary Grant, Katherine Hepburn, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Jimmy Stewart, and John Wayne have made motion picture history on this lot. Today, you'll walk in their footsteps. This is Roger Carroll, inviting you to board the Universal Glamour Tram for a guided tour of this historic studio. Let your imagination run wild as we look behind the scenes of motion pictures and television. Your visit to Universal Studios will include a walk through a star's dressing room, a look at over 500 sets, and visits to familiar streets that you've seen hundreds of times. But now, let's go and see how movies are made. Good morning, and welcome to the Universal Studios Tour. My name is Tom, your driver's name is John, and on behalf of MCA, I welcome you to Universal Studios. As we leave the Entertainment Center, we're passing the Universal Amphitheater. This outdoor theater opened in 1972 with a stage production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Universal followed up on that by making a movie of Jesus Christ Superstar the next year. Some of the stars who have performed here are Frank Sinatra, John Denver, Diana Ross, Steve Martin, The Beach Boys, and Sarah Vaughan. As you can see, we're on top of a hill now, and if it looks as though a war had taken place here, it's because our special effects department uses this site to set off explosions, crash cars, and demolish scale models. Part of the dirigible Hindenburg was blown up here for the film of the same name. We also filmed some explosions for the movie Buck Rogers in the 25th century in this area. And now below us, there's a panoramic view of the entire lot. There are 561 buildings and facades on the Universal back lot. Facade is a French word meaning the front of a building. And when we get there, you'll see that many of the solid looking structures that make up our city streets are only fronts, supported by two by fours from the back. Wait a minute, I don't know who you are, but we're not going to go in there. Uh oh. The tram is entering a giant spaceship patterned after Battlestar Galactica. This attraction opened in 1979. It is large enough to allow the four-car glamour tram inside and combines both live and audio animatronic action. The interior of the spaceship is the control center of a Cylon battle cruiser. When the hatch closes behind them, the entire tram and passengers are prisoners. By your command, speak, Centurion. This group of very strange-looking Earth creatures has been captured while attempting a sneak attack on our battleship. Their general is called Tour Guide. I am the Tour Guide. I don't know who you are, but we're not your prisoners. Silence, foolish mortals. Your fate is sealed. What is the standing order of your imperious leader? By your command, the total extermination of the life form known as man. This group will make a tasty meal for our Ovian allies. Our position here has been discovered. More humans may follow. Prepare for liftoff before I have you scavenged for spare parts. Secure for space five, travel. Eight, power seven, station, six, stand by. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff in the name of the 12 colonies of man, I demand the release of the humans. Destroy him. Get out of here. I'll be all right. And the battle continues. Word went forth to all parts of the galaxy. A single heroic colonial warrior had rescued the Earthlings from the very grasp of the evil Cylons. Mankind had one more chance. And what do visitors think of this sensational effect? It was, it seemed real. All the lasers going off and 
everything, one might hit me, I'm scared. I thought that was very good, the laser beams. I like where the um, Cylons were shooting at the good guy. I just thought it was kind of neat. I liked the effects and the, um, the visual effects and the things falling apart. It was scary when they would shoot the smoke. It's so worth seeing. That was fantastic. Now back to the tram and Tom. Where are you? In just a moment, we'll be stopping in front of one of the star's dressing rooms. This entire area is part of Universal City, a city within the county of Los Angeles with its own fire department, post office, hospital, water reservoir, and government. We also have the Sheraton Universal Hotel. It's the only hotel on any motion picture studio lot. If you watch TV, you've seen the hotel many times. It was Rampart Emergency Hospital on the series Emergency. And every time our two paramedics wheeled a victim into the emergency room, they were really entering the ballroom in the lower lobby. The hotel has also been seen on the Hardy Boys as a Hawaiian hotel and as a medical institute on the Bold Ones. But here we are, it's the first stop on our tour, the dressing rooms. You'll be going through an actual dressing room assigned to Robert Wagner. Walk on through and I'll meet you on the other side. The dressing room plays an important part in an actor's day. This is where he goes to be made up and get dressed in the clothes he'll be wearing in the film. And it doubles as his office. Makeup alone can be a time-consuming task. When Boris Karloff was made up to be the Frankenstein monster, his makeup and costume weighed 70 pounds. He drank his lunch through a straw so the makeup wasn't disturbed. And it took nearly two hours to remove the makeup at the end of the day. Since we like to surprise theatergoers, we didn't want anyone to know what the famous monster looked like. So Mr. Karloff had to walk from his dressing room to the set each day with a paper bag over his head. If you'll step this way, we'll go inside one of the 35 sound stages here on the Universal lot. A sound stage is a giant soundproof room with a high ceiling where most filming actually takes place. At Universal, there are 35 of these film stages. The largest of them, number 12, is as big as a football field. It was the stage used for filming the Concorde, Airport 79. But let's go inside. In 1925, the Phantom of the Opera was filmed on stage 28 right next door. The gilt opera boxes from that movie are still there, and we use them for new films from time to time. Back in silent film days, though, old stage 28 didn't have a roof because extraneous noise didn't make any difference. And sunlight provided all of the illumination instead of those great big lights we now use. Of course, that's why California was chosen for movie making in the first place, because there are so many sunny days here. Now, of course, the building has a roof on it, and it's soundproof. It's the location where we shot the 1979 comedy hit In God We Trust, starring Marty Feldman. But enough of that. I promised to show you some of the secrets of filmmaking, so please step this way. The tour learns how a painted background can be combined with a live action scene. It's called matte process photography. Using oil paint on a glass sheet, universal artists paint exotic backgrounds that would be impossible to duplicate. A field of oil derricks, the Kremlin, or Old New York are examples. Do you know how the painted background ends up being combined with live action? I'll have the answer in just a few minutes. Right now, the tour is enjoying another universal special effect, rear screen projection. Okay, we have a volunteer from the audience, and your name is? Chris. Okay, Chris, now climb up on the motorcycle. When I yell, action, I want you to put your feet on the pedals, grab the handlebars, and bounce up and down. Are you ready? While Chris is bouncing up and down on a spring-mounted stationary motorcycle, moving scenes that were actually filmed on the Pasadena freeway will be shown behind him. The boy, mic, and background will all be picked up by closed-circuit cameras and shown to the audience. Okay, action! Bounce harder, Chris. Going around the corner now. Lean it away. Watch where you're going. Now steer with one hand, Chris. And now, no hands at 75 miles an hour. 
get ready for your big stunt. You're about to jump off your bike and stand by it. You're ready? Off! What an act! 75 miles an hour on the freeway, jumps off without stopping, and not a scratch. Let's hear it for Chris. The rear screen effect works because the camera is monoscopic. It has one eye. Therefore, it has no depth perception, and it can't tell there is distance between the rider and the rear projection. So it combines the background with the live action in front of it, giving the appearance of an actor riding on a freeway. Watching the film in a theater, the illusion would be complete, a fantasy created by the universal filmmaker. And speaking of illusion and fantasy, that's what takes place next. So let's enter the six million dollar man bionic woman test center. Here's your chance to imagine what it would be like to be fitted with bionic parts. Hi everybody, welcome to Universal Six Million Dollar Man Bionic Woman Testing Center. My name is Judy and I'm the supervisor of the center. We've been working with top doctors, scientists and engineers on a revolutionary new technique for implanting bionic components into ordinary people. We've taken two members out of your group and have given them some of these instant bionic components. Okay, our Six Million Dollar Man. For this next demonstration, Michael, we're going to be using this truck here. But no one will believe me if I tell them it's a real truck because I work here. But they'll believe you as a representative from the group. So why don't you go ahead and check it out for them. Prove to them that it is a real truck. Bang on it. Let them hear they're perfect. Okay. Show them the hood is real. Bang the fender. <laughs> Get away from my truck. <laughs> I said check the truck, not wreck the truck. There's a difference. Uh, problem is I don't have a jack. I've only got a brace. But hey, you've got bionic arms. so. Why don't you lift it up for me? I'll put the brace under and fix it later, okay? There you go. Okay, hold it up there. Take pictures, folks. You don't see this every day. I'll put the brace under, and you can lower it down slowly now. And there it is. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you, Michael. Corey, there's a bunch of bad guys chasing you. They're out to get you. To get away from them, you have to jump over that airplane. So get in the ready position. We're waiting for clearance from the tower. We don't want you to hit any low-flying helicopters. And up. Bring your arms up. Hold them up there. And down. Perfect. You can take a seat now. I'm sure Colonel Steve Boston couldn't have done it any better than that. As the tour leaves the soundstage, they leave one of the hardest working areas on the Universal lot. Every precaution has been taken in each stage to ensure the ultimate environment for movie making. The walls of each building are six inches of poured concrete covered by three layers of fiberglass soundproofing and a layer of asbestos for fireproofing, and all held in place by what is known as Hollywood wallpaper, better known as chicken wire. A soundstage provides control of three vital concerns of the director. Sound, light, and weather. Both indoor and outdoor scenes are shot here. The doors to each stage weigh five tons apiece. But let's see how much you remember about movie making. You may want to stop the record and see if you can answer these questions. What's a matte painting? Why does it take so long to shoot a short scene? How does heat affect filming? How much film does a camera hold? Now with the answers, here are some of the people on our tour. Do you have any idea how much film is shot in a day? Ten minutes, I think it was a day. What is a matte painting? Do you remember what a matte painting is and how it works? Well, you block out a certain portion of the raw film and then uh, rerun the film and photograph another portion. You can then uh, photograph uh, scenery without going to the location because you're using uh, artificial background. Why does it take so long to shoot a, a short scene in a motion picture? Any idea? Do you remember what they told you? Yeah, they said that uh, when you have all the makeup on, the lights, after you're in the lights for a long time, that the makeup will start running down your face, so they bring in the air conditioners and cool the place down. You know, the next question was, how does heat affect filmmaking? <laughs> so you, you answered that pretty good. In the Bionic Woman sequence, you saw someone jump over an airplane. Do you think you could really jump 50 feet with one bound? If John Travolta was standing on the other side, I'm sure he could. 
There's a lot to see and enjoy at Universal Studios. And our tour is getting away, so back to the tram. We're now driving through our prop department warehouse. It's just like your attic, except we have five million things in ours, and we know where they all are. Every item is cataloged and neatly stored. We've been collecting furniture, knickknacks, paintings, 200,000 books and miscellaneous articles for over 50 years. They're all cross-indexed and they're ready for action. And if they're not ready, we have a painting and refinishing department right there where they can make new things look old and old things look new. I've been trying to get an appointment there for months. This is the soundstage where Same Time Next Year was filmed. And here's Wall Street, where we store all of our wild walls and fireplaces. Over there is the transportation department. And if you look carefully, you'll see Columbo's old car. Here's one of the big rigs used in BJ and the Bear. We have over 2,000 cars and trucks stored here. And now we're turning on to Colonial Street. It's a street of facades. House fronts that look real, but aren't. You'll recognize many of them. Some people recognize all of them. These are the most famous addresses in show business. It starts with Alfred Hitchcock's Marnie House, then Sean Cassidy's house from the Hardy Boys. Across the street is 1313 Mockingbird Lane, home of the Munsters. Next door is the home where Jimmy Stewart lived with his six-foot rabbit Harvey. If you walked in the front door of any of these houses, you'd be in the Universal Studios lumber yard because there are no backs to these houses. This beautiful street also includes the noteworthy Delta House, seen in National Lampoon Animal House. Next door stands the Cleaver House from Leva to Beaver, which was also occupied by Marcus Welby, MD. Here's Nancy Drew's house right over here. And there's where John Forsyth lived for many years as bachelor father. But enough of the suburbs. Let's go downtown. And going from the suburbs to downtown is as easy as turning a corner. This is Brownstone Street. And here's the drugstore where that famous phone call was placed in The Sting. And from that same film, here's the street Robert Shaw as Doyle Lonigan walked up. If you saw Lady Sings the Blues, you might recognize those steps right there. Diana Ross scrubbed them in her portrayal of Billie Holiday. Next door is the old apartment house where Abbott and Costello used to live. We also used this street in Little Miss Marker with Julie Andrews and a TV movie called The Rebels. If these streets look familiar, they should be. They've been New York in Kojak, Chicago for The Sting, San Francisco in Ironside, Los Angeles in Earthquake, East Berlin in Torn Curtain, and Honolulu in The Incredible Hulk. The signs are repainted to match the era and locale. Fresh paint or old paint is applied to the neighborhood to make it rich or poor, new or old. This corner building matches the first two floors of the MCA Tower. When we filmed Earthquake, that tower was supposed to be destroyed. We picked up the reflection of the real tower on a sheet of plexiglass and shot the reflection. By bending the plexiglass, it appeared as though the building was falling down. Then we cut to close-ups of this mock-up where giant foam bricks came crashing down on the actors, giving the illusion of total destruction. Illusion. It's an appropriate word and a reoccurring one. For Universal City is a land of illusion, where reality is sometimes just out of reach, as our unsuspecting tour is about to find out. Over on my side of the Glamour Tram, you can see one of our curiosity pieces, the oldest structure on the lot. It's a bridge built back in 1915 by our founder, Carl Lemley. We'll circle up on the other side of the bridge. It used to be part of the tour, but it was condemned a couple of days ago, so until it's rebuilt, we... John... It's, it's the road to the left. So until it's rebuilt, John, you took the wrong turn. We're not supposed to go across the bridge. We're not supposed to be on here, John. Yeah. Oh! What? Hang on, everybody. Hang on. Oh! Hey, we 
he made it! What the tour group just experienced is another contribution of the Universal Studios special effects team. The bridge was built in 1974. You may have seen it in the Bionic Woman. Jamie Summers dove off it into the lake below. The creaks, bangs, and crashing sound effects are all taped and played back on hidden speakers. A giant hydraulic system spins supporting beams off into space while the actual floor of the bridge drops twice. And then it rebuilds itself every three minutes. It only drops a few feet, but it feels like 50. Many people don't realize that it's an effect until they see it rebuilding itself as they drive away. Wow, I was kind of scared. I thought we were goners. When the bridge collapsed, I had almost had heart failure. It made my stomach jump. I just thought it was just going to, the front part was just going to collapse, not, not the part we were on. That it's fun. It seems like um, that it's really happening. It's all in fun, and there's a lot more of that ahead. So let's catch up with our tour as the tram heads into the forest. We're heading down the hill on Pine Tree Road. You may never have seen this road before, at least the asphalt part of it, because much of the time we cover it with dirt for a western. That shack over there has been the hideout of countless outlaw gangs. It was also dressed to be a hunting lodge in the Hardy Boys. You may have seen Maximilian Schell play a scene in this forest, but for him, we sprayed on a layer of snow. And as we turn the corner and head for town, we find ourselves on the Appian Way. It got its name from the film Spartacus, directed by Stanley Kubrick. You saw 2,000 Roman legionnaires parade down this road. The village we're now entering is Old Mexico, although it's also been Spain, Jamaica, and Vietnam. Uh-oh, it sounds like rain. And it looks like rain. Of course, this is Hollywood, so it's not really rain. There are sprinklers hidden up in the trees to make it look like rain, and that's the way it's done in most movies. The thunder comes from speakers hidden in the shrubbery. There's nothing real about this rain except the water. But do you hear something? What's that noise? It looks like a flash flood. Look out! <laughs> okay, I think we're out of danger. But look out for that tree! Okay, that was a close one. Another example of the Universal Studios Special Effects Department has just surprised the Glamour Tram passengers. 2,000 gallons of water are released from a dam hidden just out of sight. A five-foot wall of water comes crashing down straight at the tour group. But a well-engineered drain system sucks all the water away from the exposed Glamour Tram and recycles it back up the hill to await the next unsuspecting group. It's similar to the flood that chased Richard Roundtree in Earthquake. Then the falling tree narrowly misses the parked tram and hydraulically recycles itself to an upright position. And now we're on the dusty thoroughfares of Universal's sleepy little Mexican town. Marlon Brando walked these streets in two different films, Appaloosa and The Ugly American. Jack Klugman was here on a mission of mercy in Quincy. And Walk Proud was filmed here too. As we turn the corner leaving Mexico, we enter the Oklahoma Territory. This is the Wild West we all know because this is Six Points, Texas, where six different western streets all converge. The most famous movie cowboys in the world have walked through these thoroughfares. Tom Mix, Hoot Gibson, Jimmy Stewart, and John Wayne shot it out with the bad guys right here. Even W.C. Fields and Mae West visited that saloon over there. The tour is now moving into Universal's back lot. They're in the middle of exterior sets that have been seen by millions of moviegoers. Each time they're used, they're dressed for the occasion with new or old signs, sometime lettered in foreign languages. For the tropics, they wheel in the palm trees, and for the cold northern climates, they spray on a little ice. The tram passes Bo Radley's house into Kill a Mockingbird. Gregory Peck won an Academy Award for his role as Atticus Finch. 
and the Universal 747 soundstage where the original airport was filmed, as well as scenes from the Concorde Airport 79. Many people recognize the world's most famous motel, 90 Bristol Court. Its tenants have included Elvis Presley, James Garner, Rock Hudson, Jack Webb, Raymond Burr, Jack Klugman, and Robert Wagner. You may be surprised to learn that this little lake we're coming to now is the entire Pacific Ocean in McHale's Navy. We built a wooden mock-up of a PT boat at the edge of the lake. Then, just like the motorcycle ride on the Pasadena Freeway, we used a rear screen projector to get the effect of being out on the ocean. But uh, unless I'm mistaken, there's a submarine left over from the series that's trailing us now. There it is over there. I hope they're friendly. Uh-oh! was a close call. Now what are we going to do? We had to turn to avoid the torpedo and we're heading straight for the Red Sea. This could be a problem. It was a problem for Universal's engineers. They devised a system that instantly drains 40,000 gallons of water out of the middle of the lake. Part, O ye waters. The water is pumped into a reservoir to the left of the tram. where it is held in readiness for the next tram. After the tour group is clear, the passageway disappears beneath the churning waters. For those of you who won't be going abroad this year, welcome to Europe. This section of our back lot has portrayed virtually every European country. It's been France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Spain, Finland, Russia, and Monte Carlo. We filmed All's Quiet on the Western Front here. It received the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1929. This section of the back lot burnt to the ground in 1967 and we filmed the fire. Then we rebuilt exactly like the original and now when we need pictures of these buildings on fire, we have them stored in a film vault. This section of the back lot includes the square from which Spartacus addressed the Roman legions. It was also the Kremlin in a McLeod matte painting sequence. The Court of Miracles next door was the scene of Frankenstein's first public appearance. Lon Chaney was there in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Lon Chaney Jr. used it as the Wolfman. Another of Universal's famous monsters also flew in for a film or two, Bela Lugosi as Dracula. And over here is the Tower of London. Boris Karloff scampered around the parapets in 1939. Spencer Tracy meditated there in Judgment at Nuremberg. Over on the driver's side is the corral where we kept Francis the Talking Mule. Donald O'Connor starred in seven Francis films for Universal. Uh, John, you just uh, drove past the warning bell. Don't, don't stop now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the Universal train station off to the right. One of the steam trains is leaving. Uh, John, and, and it's heading right this way. Don't stop the tram here. Oh, saved by the special effects department. Well, if that didn't scare you, here's something that might. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho House. Anthony Perkins lived there in one of history's scariest motion pictures. A lot of people didn't take showers for a long time after seeing Psycho. As the tram passengers stare up the hill at Psycho House, the driver makes an unannounced right turn down the hill to another town, another lake. The town is Amity, New England. The lake is named Jaws. This is Amity, the town that was terrorized by the great white shark in Jaws. 
Universal won three Academy Awards for that film. The 25-foot great white shark used in that film weighs 6,000 pounds. It too was built by our special effects department. But I've been told the shark has escaped and it's running wild. We're all supposed to keep an eye out for it. We even have that fellow there fishing for him with special bait. Look, there he is. He's taken the bait. He's running with the hook. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. He's coming after us. The dock is, is breaking. Let's run for it. Oh my gosh, let's go before he decides to attack us again. We just got started in the nick of time. We're safe now. I'll have to warn the next group not to get so close to the water. I think when the tram went sideways, it was that was kind of exciting. I think the children really kind of got scared, thought they were going in too. Everybody got scared when the shark came up. The shark came at me. I took a picture of it. That was fantastic. Well, it, well, it was thrilling, really. Ha un'emozione grandissima. Ma per tutto, per tutto quello che ho visto. E quella di montagne. Sì, anche quella. Ho chiuso gli occhi. Well, you know, she's closed her eyes because she was so scared. I was too, actually. As the tram leaves Jaws, it heads for another waterway, Falls Lake, which was built in 1927 for Uncle Tom's cabin. Rock Hudson stayed in its hunting lodge in the Howard Hawks film, Man's Favorite Sport. At Airport 77, the plane crashed in Falls Lake, although it was actually a model. Wave machines were used to keep the water churning while giant fans whipped spray across the whitecaps. The rattan shack and Quonset huts will be familiar to youngsters. They're from the remake of Gilligan's Island. We're now entering the Universal Wilderness area. The back lot covers 420 acres and this portion of it is left wild for scenes that take place in the country. Here's where we built the roadside cafe for the Alfred Hitchcock movie Family Plot. And right there is where we shot the Bionic Dog segment of the Bionic Woman series. Film history has been made here. More than film history has been made here. It was on this spot that the Battle of California was fought between American settlers and Mexican troops. The settlers won and California was ceded to the United States immediately following the battle in 1846. In 1915, a Bavarian haberdasher named Carl Lemley bought the area and founded Universal Studios. Thomas Edison came to fire up the electrical equipment and Buffalo Bill was the guest of honor for the grand opening. Now that we've gained a bit of altitude, you have a good view of the wilderness area. We don't usually go quite this high and it's getting a little chilly. And unless I'm mistaken, we're on Glacier Road. I think I better prepare you for this. In order for us to reach the entertainment center, we're going to have to drive right past the doomed glacier. So please don't make any noise. The ice pack could crumble at any t the, the slightest sound could trigger an avalanche. Here we go. The glacier at Universal Studios is patterned after the ice tunnel at Mount Rainier National Forest in Washington. The frigid interior is produced by tons of air conditioners. The vibrant sound is sensor round, which Universal used in earthquake and roller coaster. The tunnel is not as long as it appears, but that effect is called reflected force perspective, a technique perfected by Alfred Hitchcock. For many people, this is the most memorable part of our tour. I, I was surprised. I thought we was um, turned upside down. It was really the glacier move. I thought I was going upside down. I was really scared there. Oh, everybody was uh, thinking they were going upside down. The effect? Oh, got dizzy. Uh, um, I thought I was going round, but I was a bit surprised that I wasn't. Like I was turning around, you know, on the side and fall over or something. It freaks you out. It amazed me. It's really out of the world, you know. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. Just uh, it goes in there and then, you know, especially, uh, <laughs> you know, in and out. The area we're in now behind Falls Lake is called Three Falls Canyon. 
Mike Todd's film Around the World in 80 Days was filmed here. Fort Laramie on the right side of the tram was built for the TV series Wagon Train. And now we're entering the entertainment center area adjacent to the starting point. In addition to the exhibits you'll find here, there are regular performances of several live shows. The famous Universal Stuntman Show, the Airport 77 Show, the Makeup Show, and starting in just a moment, the incredible performance of birds, dogs, cats, and other four-legged friends, the fabulous Universal Animal Show. The animals in the show at Universal Entertainment Center are trained by internationally acclaimed Ray Berwick. In this show, his assistant, Brian Renfro, is putting a famous student through his paces. This is Fred, the cockatoo from Beretta. What a bird. Get up here, show everybody you're the only bird in the world that talks upside down. Say something. Hello. Okay. That's good stuff, isn't it? He also, every once in a while, has to answer the telephone for Beretta. Would you do that for me, please? Thank you. He knows some imitations. I'll see if I can get him to do them. His first one is a very small dog barking. Bark, 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 bark. One more. Bark. All right, that's a chihuahua. Here's one of his new ones. You have a terrible cold. I want you to cough. <coughs> cough again. Okay, that's better. Here's my favorite imitation. He does a chicken. Okay, turkey, do your chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in case you don't recognize this one, this is his imitation of a big crazy eagle posing. Are you ready? Big crazy eagle pose. There we go. Thank you. We'll be right back. To prove that inexpensive birds can also be trained, a small member of the parrot family flies out into the audience. Uh, this next, I need somebody who has a dollar bill. Now, hold it in your hand just like this. Okay? And would you stand up, please? All right. Now, hold it up just a little bit higher. You can straighten your arm out like that. Okay. Go pick up that dollar. Bring it here. There we go. Thank you very much. Oh, you want your dollar back? <laughs> if it was a tin, I would have kept it. This wouldn't even buy me a gallon of gas. Hold your arm, your hand back up like that. I'll have him fly it back and put it in your hand. Okay, take it back over there. That a boy. There we go. That's a good bird. Later, Johnny the Mongrel Dog that has appeared on Starsky and Hutch, Beretta, and other TV shows, steals the show with a rapid-fire performance of response to spoken commands. Lie down. Stand. Bark. Lie down. Sit. Stand. Sit. Stand. Lie down. Sit. Lie down. Stand. Turn to your right. Now turn to your left and lie on your side. All the way. That'll <laughs> get up in your chair. I want you to wave to everybody. Would you please? Wave, lovely. Come on, wave. Wave, Johnny. Now we're at one of the most popular shows on the Universal Tour, The Stunt Show. The three participants could be labeled the instructor, who sets up the scenes, the bad guy, who wears black, of course, and the clown, who's everyone's favorite. Let's listen in as the instructor describes how they prepare for a film fight. Today we thought we would set up one of the basic elements of our business, that is the motion picture stunt fight. When we're called upon to do this, we go through a period of rehearsing that we call blocking out of fight. This all means that we go through the fight routine many times, in slow motion of course, until we have complete confidence in each other's movement. And then and only then will we put the fight on film. You'll notice that Steve's fist goes for the man's face, Brian will snap his head to the side. Ow. And the punch we like to use is the one to the midsection. That punch is delivered in this manner. Steve approaches his target, he will pull the punch or bounce it off. Ooh. At the same time, Brian can tighten up the midsection, perhaps to let out a breath of air. <laughs> Once again, it would look like this. Oh. <laughs> I got red in the eyes. What follows is a fun-filled fight scene packed with surprises, action, and a comedy twist. Get out here! I don't care what you like. I'm the boss. You're nothing. Well, how about that? Boss over nothing. <laughs> I want order out of you. Order. Order. Okay, give me hot dog and some pop. Loosen up and get into this. Yeah, loosen him up. Slow motion, get the timing. Slow motion. Ah! Oh. ah. Oh. He said slow motion. I don't care what he said. Well, I'm not going to 
gonna do it. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. If I come over there, you'll think it's my business. Get over here! The action builds to a fast-paced climax, which ends when the bad guy gets what's coming to him. Meanwhile, on another part of the entertainment center area, another popular hero prepares for his show. Coming up next, The Incredible Hulk. Universal Studios Tour Makeup Show features a dramatic demonstration of how motion picture makeup works. As we join the performance, a man and a woman have been selected from the audience to be made up as the Frankenstein monster and the bride of Frankenstein. The Incredible Hulk, who everyone expected earlier, is late. All right. If you guys are ready, let's take the capes off. <laughs> let's turn the chairs and give them a look. Voila. I think Mike likes it. <laughs> Margaret! Oh! You're so pretty. Come here. Are you embarrassed? <laughs> it's gonna get worse in a second. <laughs> I want you to turn right over here. Keep, look right this way for those cameras. Smile over there. Don't turn. Frankie, right, come down here and join us. Oh, how nice. Italian sandals with a gray suit. Nice touch. <laughs> Frankenstein, I want you to turn and meet your new bride. Uh, give her a little kiss there, Mike. Go for a little monster kiss and a hug. The cash by so nice have these two. I'm sorry, folks, I can't keep you here any longer, though, because we have another show starting right away, uh, right next door. Um, the only thing I can suggest is if you come back to the next show, maybe you'll show up. Uh, <laughs> look, if you're not missing anything, it's no big deal. No, really, I'm being very honest with you. Now, all that other stuff is a script, I have to say that, but honest, the guy's more like the Bulk than the Hulk. He really is. No, he really is. He's like the Jolly Green Giant, you know, big green, kind of slow, kind of... Ah! A little makeup and a little imagination add up to a lot of fun at Universal Studios. But now, let's go to the show that lets the audience participate in the creation of the performance at the Screen Test Theater and Airport 77. Actors chosen from the audience perform in a condensed version of Airport 77. Their scenes are intercut with actual takes from the movie. Right now, we're at the point in this movie where Jack Lemmon has just worked his way to the surface. Now, he is about to signal the Navy to let the Navy know where the sunken plane is located. I'd like all of the men in the plane to move over here by the table. I'd like the first three of you to kneel shoulder to shoulder right down there by the table. You're looking out a window and you're watching for the Navy divers. You know that they're out there somewhere. Uh, when I point to you, I want all six of you to point right back to me, and all of you, all at the same time, say, they're divers out there. They're coming for us. Roll it. Men, lean forward. Looking out the window through the water. The Navy's going to lift the plane up off of the bottom of the ocean. Stewardesses kneel down, hold on to somebody or something. Water's leaking into the plane. You're not out of this yet. Passengers, when I give you the cue, I want all of you to jump to your feet. Everybody jump up. Kneel tight, squeeze, squeeze, tight, tight, cut. Print, that's a take. Good job. Let them know, huh? Very good. 
This concludes our visit to Universal Studios. Now that you've had a chance to learn how movies are made, I know you'll enjoy your next film even more. It's been our pleasure to share our secrets with you, and we hope that this insight into our techniques and behind-the-scene glimpse of Hollywood in action will heighten your appreciation of the fabulous land of make-believe that's Hollywood. Our job is to entertain you both on and off the screen. We hope you've enjoyed your stay with us and that you'll come back often. So long, everybody.